Hello my darlings, it's Zui here and today we're having an Aizawa story for you. Yay! Aizawa is in Bakugo, so there will definitely be less views than usually on his under this video. So it is even more important that you like or dislike, comment something down below and watch the video until the end. Also, remember to share it around so other people can see it. This is the best way you can indirectly support me because this is the best way to support me with the YouTube algorithm to make Susan pay me a little bit more. However, on the other hand, you can also support me more directly by donating to my Patreon to get my scripts early or you can buy something off of my merch store to get something more physical. That just depends on your own wallet. Should you be new here and think I'm worth it, please remember to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to get all the notifications you desire to join my beautiful darling doll army. Also, if you want to give me some more additional uh, support, fan art is always appreciated. You can also share it on my Discord, link down in the description as well. Now please, enjoy the show. You yawned in your office chair. You're going through test papers of class 1b and compared them with general studies, who had written the same exam just two weeks earlier. The general studies course had complained that it had been too difficult despite their good grades. And now seeing the outcome with the students of 1b, maybe they were right. Or the hero course was simply too focused on physical rather than mental training. And for a moment, you considered giving the same test to class 1A. Slowly you took a sip of your morning soda. Lunch Rush was selling this delicious strawberry soda. It was only sold at select locations. So when you got this job and saw that he sold it in the student's cafeteria, you almost jumped. Despite that, it was still rather expensive. You had been part of UA's faculty for about three years now, teaching philosophy and public relations with the media. It was precious seeing young pros utilize tips you had given them with interviews. It made you feel proud, like you actually accomplished something. You had just finished grading the final test, SC minus, when a very upset Miss Midnight barged through the door of the teacher's lounge. There you are! She hissed towards you. Taken aback, you sunk into your chair. What did I do? You squeaked. With a face redder than a tomato and a seemingly hastily scribbled note in hand, she quickly approached you while slamming the paper on your table. What did you do with the students? She barked. With an intimidated look, you stared at her face. I beg your pardon, miss? You asked, confused. Her left eye twitched before hitting the paper on your desk. With shaking hands, you took it, and your brows furrowed. It wasn't that bad. On closer inspection, it wasn't hastily written, just multiple different handwriting styles. It seemed to be something multiple students had worked on. You blinked. It had the names of all teachers listed with a number going as low as 4 out of 10 to 9 out of 10. A bit gross and juvenile, but nothing unexpected from hormonal teens. So? You asked, confused. Midnight stomped her foot on the ground. Look at the numbers! The woman was seething now. Better not keep her waiting. Luckily, the names were in alphabetical order. How sweet. Apparently, you were an 8 out of 10. And your name was even written in Ida's style of handwriting. Did this mean he was the one suggesting you for this list? Then an idea came to you. You suppressed a grin as you shifted your gaze towards the letter M. There it was. Miss Midnight. Seven out of ten. You almost giggled, before giving the paper back to your colleague. So, 
It's a popularity poll. Nothing bad, you said dismissively. This clearly is a scale of who is the most attractive teacher. What did you do to the students to get such a high number? You blinked. You really want to scoff at her and pack your stuff to enjoy the end of your workday. However, this would be cut short should she get angry enough to abuse her quirk on you. After all, you had nothing to defend yourself against. This woman's sleeping gas. After all, you had nothing to defend yourself against this woman's sleeping gas. Worst of all, you were the only one out of two faculty members without a quirk, the other one being the security manager and former police officer Dojima. Problem was, now you were getting agitated yourself. You opened your mouth to call her an old hag, and that she should leave you alone when Shota Aizawa entered the office. His tired eyes immediately went to the furious Miss Midnight. I told you to not do this, he said with a disappointed sigh. And the woman crossed her arms. Whatever, she scoffed. You do realize this is bullying at the workplace? Uh, or harassment. Look, I, I don't know. There are too many words for bullying nowadays. Whatever it is, Nezo can fire you for this. Midnight was taken aback. He can't. I've been working here longer than her. She hissed. Aizawa sighed. And I've been working here longer than both of you. I will be a witness. Just drop it, Midnight. Please. His voice was both bored and fed up. Like a child who didn't get their candy, Midnight blew up her cheeks before shouting, Whatever! Followed by a skank towards you. And you snickered. <laughs> Coming from someone as trashy as you, that's almost a compliment. You little... That's enough, Midnight. Go! Her lips quivered, and with her head red from anger and most definitely embarrassment, she stormed out of the lounge. Aizawa sighed. <sighs> you alright? You nodded. Good. He turned on his heels. If you need to talk, you know my number. And then he left. You grumbled. The fight with Miss Midnight still on your mind. You put the glass bottle back between your lips and shucked more of the alcoholic drink down your throat. During your entire drive home, all you could think of was drinking the night away. It was Friday anyways, so who cares? This entire argument had brought you right back into school. Back in the day, you used to be the little wallflower no one paid attention to. It was only with hard work, and a minor nose job, that you managed to look as good as you did right now. It was mostly out of fear of becoming older, however. When the final drops fell into your mouth, you threw the bottle against the wall. It didn't shatter, luckily. You let out a groan, followed by a few curse words. So far, you had managed to keep a low enough profile. No one cared about your existence. Just like you wanted it. And now that these dumb teens made their stupid little list, Midnight wanted your head. Somewhere in the back of your head, you knew she was being very immature. But having an enemy was the last thing on your agenda. In your drunken stupor, you waddled around your living room, feeling very restless. But by now you were too far gone to hit the local club scene for validation. Suddenly a thought came to you, and you started giggling before typing a familiar number into your smartphone. Who knew that a smartphone could actually call someone? Hello? said a tired voice at the end. Hey, Shoja. You mumbled. Oh, 
It's you, he said with mild confusion. What's wrong? I don't feel safe, you slurred. Please come over. He was quiet for a second. Are you still there? You muttered. I am. Uh, fine. I'm, I'm on my way. He said with mild amusement. He arrived ten minutes later by knocking at your window. Mumbling to yourself, you let him in. You don't realize I have a Zor, you said. Yeah, but I was on patrol, he said. Anyways, it's faster doing it this way. You giggled. <laughs> You're a strange and mysterious one, aren't you? He chuckled. You're drunk, huh? You nodded. That C word of a woman didn't leave my head. He nodded slightly while carefully nudging you towards your sofa and setting you down. Why did you call me? He asked in a calming tone while still standing in front of you. I... I wanna... I wanna... It was hard to speak. I, I wanna cuddle. He raised an eyebrow. I saw I'd never shown you any affection. So why was he the one you called for? Something like this. However, who was he to decline an attractive young woman like you? So with a smirk, he sat down next to you, before you threw your upper body onto his lap. Closing your eyes, you hummed happily. He sighed, and then looked around. Your living room was small, and had a small kitchen aisle. Behind him was a decently sized bed. Your place was tidy, the only things that stood out were empty ice cream packages and empty bottles of gin. He smiled. It was the same brand he enjoyed on occasion. I'm lonely, you mumbled, and he smiled softly. <laughs> it's fine, I'm here now. You adjusted your position to a more comfy one. And he sighed almost happily. I want a boyfriend. You mumbled and he chuckled. <laughs> okay. You rubbed your cheek on his lap. Why not you? You rolled a little to your left to look up at his face and his eyes moved down to look at you. You're drunk. You're talking nonsense. You whimpered like a hurt puppy before raising your arms like a baby reaching for milk. But I want to spend more time with you. He sighed. As I found you absolutely precious right now. Let me think about it, alright? You blinked. Then take a shower. He snorted. <laughs> what? I always can think better under the shower. You said. You raised your body a little and began pointing at the blue door. There's my bathroom. Yeah, no. You're gonna peek. He mused. No, I wouldn't. But I would try to get inside with you. You stared back at his face and grinned. Before you get inside me. He laughed out loud. <laughs> An interesting proposition. <laughs> Thank God he wasn't drunk himself. He might would have agreed. But a shower sounded just like the thing he needed. Leaving you alone, however, didn't feel right. So he caved. Okay, fine, but only if you stay put. You mumbled, but allowed him to go. Ten minutes later, he left the bathroom. His wet hair stuck to his body, towel wrapped around his waist. He wanted to check on you. You were still lying on your sofa, snoring ever so slightly, with a smile on your face. 
For a moment he considered putting his clothes back on and leaving, but then he decided for the more entertaining option. Turning around, he grabbed his boxes from the bathroom floor and quietly marched over to you. Alright, now bye. He said more to himself than to your sleeping form. Gently he picked you up and carried you to your bed, laying you down and then getting into the bed himself after placing a bucket on your nightstand just in case you started vomiting later tonight or in the morning. Then he laid down next to you, pulling your blanket up. The last thing he saw before he closed his eyes was your happily smiling face. <laughs>